A very common application for motors is incremental motion. So we want to position, reach a certain position in a certain amount of time. Here's a graph showing the angular position of the motor versus time. So it starts off at zero and then in time TC it's reached our desired position, theta d. So after that the position stays constant. Now what we're going to look at is the velocity profile. So this is a position profile. Velocity profile is the motor velocity as a function of time. So question, what is the time rate of change of theta at t equals zero in this case? Okay, it's given by the slope and according to my drawing, well it's supposed to be zero. So at time zero the velocity is zero. What about at tc, t sub c? Again, the slope is zero at that point and so the velocity there is zero. So we know that our velocity profile is going to start at zero or, and then return to zero uh, by the time we reach TC. Now we know that much about it but in between is left open so what the velocity does in between time zero and time TC. And so we want to optimize the velocity profile but whenever we talk about things being optimized we have to answer the question optimize with respect to what? So here are some examples of what we could optimize our velocity profile with respect to. We could come up with a velocity profile that's going to have a minimum peak speed. So that means that the highest speed the motor gets is going to be minimized with this velocity profile. Or we could have one that has a minimum peak current or etc cetera, etc. Cetera. So there are different ways we could optimize our velocity profile. Usually for incremental motion control the limiting factor is heat dissipation in the armature. So what this means is that we are going to find a velocity profile that's optimal with respect to the heat dissipation. And that energy is given by the integral from zero to TC, so from stop back to stop, of power the motor and oops okay power and if we substitute in um, power equals vi or i squared r then the heat dissipated is the armature resistance times current squared And it turns out that for this criteria, if we optimize it with respect to the heat dissipated, the optimal velocity profile turns out to be parabolic. So now if we look at the velocity profile, again that's omega, not theta. So we're looking at the velocity as a function of time. Then I said it's parabolic. So at time zero the velocity is zero and at time TC we've reached our destination and the velocity is zero again. And the peak velocity is at the halfway point in time. The magnitude of that peak velocity is 3 times theta d divided by 2 t sub c. And this is for the uh, parabolic velocity profile. And the equation here for the speed as a function of time is 6 theta d over t c cubed t c minus time times time. Now we're going to look at a couple of other different uh, velocity profiles and see how they do as far as heat dissipation or heat generated, heat that's required to be dissipated. And so we need an equation 
relating the current to the angular velocity. And we'll start with this equation that we saw in a previous video for the motor torque and in terms of the motor speed. So the um, armature moment of inertia, the acceleration, and then we have a load torque here. So load torque could be friction or something. Or if the motor is being used to raise a mass, it would be the, the torque required to lift that mass. And this is equal to the torque is equal to the torque constant times the current. So in this equation, tau sub tau sub L is the applied torque. on the output shaft are so load torque and also what's different from this equation between this equation and what we saw before is we're neglecting the damping so when we looked at the mechanical model before we considered the viscous damping but here we've omitted that term So what we get if we make these substitutions and solve for the heat dissipated, or the energy, is that WC is equal to RA over torque constant squared times K, which is a new variable. So times these constants, we've got the moment of inertia, the desired position, and the time that we're given to complete the move, plus whatever load torque we have squared times the time. For the parabolic velocity profile, k is equal to 12. Now, the reason we did that is we can compare this uh, value k for different velocity profiles. So to make it easier to control the motor, other velocity profiles are often used. For example, triangular and here's what that looks like we've got time and the uh, angular velocity of the motor so we'll start at zero increase to some maximum speed and then go back down to zero at t sub c and this is tc over two so this is symmetrical um, and the maximum speed here is 2 times theta d over tc. You can see the difference between um, that and the parabolic profile. So this has a higher maximum velocity than this does. And for this case, we get k is equal to 16. So for the triangular velocity profile, we have to dissipate more energy than with the par parabolic velocity profile. Another um, profile that's possible is trapezoidal. And we'll look extensively at the trapezoidal velocity profile. In fact, that's the velocity profile that you know would make a shape approximately like this for position. Oh, so here's what the trapezoidal velocity profile looks like. Again, we have angular velocity on the vertical axis. We ramp up to a speed, and then we hold that speed, and then we decelerate. So here's TC, and in this case, the maximum speed is the same as for 
the parabolic. But this is only true for this um, equal parts trapezoidal velocity profile. What I mean by equal parts is that the three different sections for velocity um, take up equal time. So we're increasing speed at a constant rate for one-third of our total time, then we hold a constant velocity for one-third of the total time, and then we decrease at a constant rate for one-third of the total time. So you could see if, for example, we were to shorten this time here where we have a constant velocity, that the maximum speed would um, increase because the area under this curve needs to stay the same because the area under the curve is theta d. If you integrate velocity over time you get displacement so the area under the curve is the displacement theta d. And if you decrease this time of constant velocity all the way to where it's zero then you end up with a triangular velocity profile and the max velocity is 2 theta d over tc. So this 3 theta d over 2 tc is the maximum velocity if you have equal parts in your trapezoidal velocity profile. And K for our energy dissipation for the trapezoidal, equal parts trapezoidal velocity profile is 13.5.